Hello and welcome to The Arise interview, 60 glorious minutes of multifaceted discussion where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things and we feature the voices at the heart of the stories. I'm Charles Aniagolo. Coming up in the next hour, every four years in Nigeria at the front of the stage and in the headlights, political contenders vie to be the next leaders. But behind them, somewhat in the shadows, are other formidable powers who will still be pulling some of the biggest strings, whoever wins. The financial system represented in Nigeria by the central bank is one of those most powerful forces, unelected but affecting the lives of all Nigerians and arguably the entire subcontinent. Well, today we'll be looking at banking, politics, and economics and asking whether in the context of the current economic crisis, growing unemployment and the continuing electricity crunch, not to mention the lack of capital loans for businesses, the banking system still has the right focus any longer. In a moment. Now, clouds on the horizon, dark currents in the national economy, vulnerabilities in Nigeria's financial system. As you may know, for the past three years, Nigeria, like many countries around the world, has been battling with a number of economic shocks. Some of these have originated from outside, including a fluctuation in commodity prices and a slowdown in global growth. Others, according to analysts, have been self-inflicted, such as a move at one stage towards a more rigid foreign exchange regime, which handicapped and constrained investors. The result of all that was a contraction in GDP, inflation hitting almost 18% a couple of years ago, significant depreciation of the exchange rate, depletion in foreign exchange reserves, strain on the banking sector, rising debt profile, and of course, loss of investor confidence in the stock market. Market. We'll talk about all that in a moment. But first, take a listen to the governor of Nigeria's central bank, Godwin Emefiele, speaking about how the bank subsequently began improving its policy responsiveness and its shock absorption capability. In view of these developments, the Central Bank of Nigeria took several major policy measures. To mention a few, we instituted a tight monetary policy stance in order to rein in inflationary pressures, with monetary policy rate hiked in, June, in July 2016 from 12% to 14% and maintained there since that time. We have also used open market operations to support the tightening measures. We changed the structure of our trade balance. In effect, we established a decisive withdrawal of the de facto subsidy for the importation of goods that can be produced in Nigeria. We pursued stability in the, in the exchange rate market. The central bank took a number of actions to punish speculators, debtors, rent trippers, and rent seekers. We encouraged increased FX inflows from remittances by licensing international money transfer organizations, IMTUs. We also increased FX supply into the interbank market and established the investors exporters window in April 2017. We increased development finance activities and accelerated it very greatly, aimed at diversifying the Nigerian economy away from overdependence on oil revenues. We had, we had targeted interventions at, the, at specific high impact sectors like agriculture, including uh, including introducing the Anchor Bura program, which is a program that is meant to stimulate agriculture and further grow wealth and transfer wealth to our rural community in Nigeria. In light of this and other policy responses, we are delighted that the economy has turned the corner with our worst days clearly behind us. And I say worst days clearly behind us. 
And that's the uh, governor of the Nigerian Central Bank, Godwin Emefiele. Well, for more on the operations of Nigeria's Central Bank and the country's financial system, I'm joined now in the Abuja studio by the director of the Corporate Communications Department at the Central Bank of Nigeria, Isaac Okarafo, and by the development economist, former deputy governor of Nigeria's Central Bank and presidential candidate in the 2019 election, Dr. Obadiah Mailafia, and by the development economist, Odilim Basil Mwebara, who is also chairman and CEO of Pan-Africa Development Corporate Company, a financial and public policy consulting firm. Thank you very much indeed, gentlemen, for coming in. And I'm going to start with you, you. Um, Dr. Mailafia. Help us to look at the evidence and whether that matches what the central government, governor we just heard there has been saying. For instance, GDP, after several consecutive quarters of contraction, appears to be growing again. Is that a very fragile growth, especially given that population appears to be ahead of GDP growth in Nigeria? Yeah, I indeed, Charles, you have a point. And uh, I feel awful awkward, you know, having to, um, you know, uh, critique my former colleagues because the CBN, as Isaac would tell you, is a little bit like the military. We still have that. It's a family, is it? It's a family. Yeah, we but at the same time, you call. were a presidential candidate. Candidate, exactly. So, so that, I ought to that's be. in that respect, yes, we want it, your objective well, assessment. Yeah, indeed, indeed. That, that is really what, because we are intellectuals in any case, we mm. have to be objective and, and factual. Um, well, yes, it is true. There is some recovery taking place because if you recall, in 2017, we had actually achieved a negative of minus 1.9 percent, which had never existed since the Civil War. Mm. 1968 was the last time uh, the economy had actually grown negatively to that extent. So, well, you know, this year, if we achieve 3 percent, we'll be very lucky. Uh, so it is still a very fragile recovery, uh, <coughs> no doubt about it. But there is some recovery, but it's very fragile in the sense that, look, but it's not exactly all the fault of the CBN, because the CBN you say is all in charge. The fault. So that yes. means there is some fault. Yes, indeed. Right. It is, you know, because they're in charge of the monetary side. You always have to work in tandem with the fiscal side to get the right orchestra, if I use the analogy mm. of classical music. But I think for a long time, the orchestra was playing with only the monetary side, because there was no government, you know. Uh, some years there was there was no cabinet. It took quite a while. Six months there was no cabinet, and even this time it did not happen on day one. So there were a lo lot of uncertainties, uh, and that affected you know confidence, especially uh, investment <coughs> sentiments and, and confidence. Um, some of my concerns are that we still haven't reached single digit with regard to inflation. It has we've made a lot of progress. Uh, uh, secondly, I worry greatly about you know multiple exchange rates. Uh, we had that problem before, but we had achieved a uniform rate. And I don't know why it is still so difficult. Uh, and, uh, and again, no fault of the government. We feel that no fault of the, 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 the Apex Bank. We feel that it does not have the same autonomy that some of us enjoyed. Mm -hmm. To be very honest with you, we enjoyed a lot of autonomy. We made some mistakes. Uh, but there was autonomy. I don't think that they have the same autonomy like before. Uh, that concerns me. I'm a politician. Uh, I mean, I tried to go into politics. There was a lot of political interference, and that is not very good. Right. Okay. Well, let, let me bring so, you in, Isaac Okarafo, yeah. which is why we're very grateful to yeah. you for taking the time. You're the mm -hmm. Corporate Communications uh, Department Director at the Central Bank of Nigeria, and get your response to that, because it's not just Dr. Obadiah. There, there have been quite a lot of comments in the press, a lot of people internationally and locally who say that the independent of the Central Bank of Nigeria is being called into question more now than ever before? Well, um, I do not think so. I, um, our independence, our instrument autonomy remains solid. Um, you see, when people talk about central, the Central Bank, they tend to talk about it in the realm of one institution in the moon. 
that has no relationship, that is not about the country, about Nigeria. I know a couple of issues had, you know, tended to bring people to that kind of perception. Mm. Um, maybe when the president said that he had directed the central bank. Yes, and we're going to talk give, about that to give a bit later in the program. Yeah. Any cent to mm. anybody importing food. Mm. But people forget that the president was just echoing what we had started yeah. in 2017. Right. Now, we, Godwin and Mefiela made yeah. that point, and yes. we're going to have a clip from him making precisely that point yes. later on. Mm -hmm. But let, let me just, because we're going to talk, we're diverting a whole section to that. It's not okay. just that he opened up with the independence. I, I just want to talk about the things that the central bank is actually doing as okay. far as monetary policy is concerned. Right. Let's just establish the parameters of yeah. that discussion. What about things like inflation? We talked about GDP growth. Yes. That shows some you know, measure of growth, although it's not where most people want it to be. And clearly what we're seeing that population is ahead of GDP growth. Yeah. But what about inflation? Are we seeing moderation in inflation? And has that moderation been constant over several consecutive months? Well, you can see for yourself, in 2016, what was the level of inflation? Well, it's almost 18%. 18.6 or 18.7%. Yeah. What is it today? <laughs> 11. Around 11%. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, with that, it, it, it started dropping precipitously mm. because of what the CBN has been able to do. I, um, people tend to criticize because what, what are the counterfactual? What if it hadn't dropped? A few things were done to bring it down. Growth. In 2016, we, went, we were in recession. Today, we've done about nine, nine consecutive um, um, quarters of growth, no matter how you put it. And so with that, um, people should see progress. <coughs> yes, I agree that the growth is fragile. But then some progress has been done, has been made. Quite a number of countries have gone in since then, since 2016, quite a number of countries have gone and gone in and out of recession and went back. Mm. So um, yes, we, we, we know that the, the growth is fragile, and that is why we're also putting policy in place to ensure that growth is poured and that the issue of employment is addressed. Right. Okay. We'll, we'll yeah. talk more about those policies in a minute. But let me bring in um, Odilim, Basile and Weber. We've got less than a minute. It's not fair to you. When we come back from break, we'll come straight back to you. But what about things like the exchange rates? Have you seen any significant appreciation of the Naira to the dollar? What about the supply of foreign exchange? Just give us a brief synopsis so we can set things up and then we'll come back and talk some more about it. Anyway, I have been one of those people saying that uh, the exchange rate has to be liberalized market forces to determine it. At the beginning, it will be, it will be very difficult. It will have a lot of effect on people. But it encourages a level playing field. And also, it encourages foreign investors to take an understanding that we have democratized our exchange rate. Right now, the, our exchange rate is the de facto exchange rate, and it's dangerous. Thank God that the uh, former CBN governor, who is fed in this country, has been saying it. I've been saying this entire time with that number. Look, you cannot allow CBN to be the one that will determine the exchange rate. Because as he does it, so he encourages round tripping. The so-called round tripping is against the answer. Because if I know I get money from CBN at a certain rate and go to the, to the, to the, to the black market and sell it, why shouldn't I do that? OK, and let me ask you to just hold that thought. We'll come back to you in a minute. You're watching The Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead as we continue our look at the interplay between banking, politics, and economics in Nigeria. Stay with us.
Welcome back to the Arise interview where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things around the world and featuring the voices at the heart of the stories. I'm Charles Anyagolu. Today we're looking at the banking and financial system in Nigeria and comparing it to other countries, what it is, what it ought to be and whether it still has the right focus. But how has banking evolved over the centuries globally? Well, let's start off this section with a proper central banking historical perspective and its echoes in modern times. Banking, of course, really took off in the Middle Ages in Europe when usury, as it was biblically known then, money lending in today's terminology was condemned, considered to be a sin and a crime against God. England at the time did not believe in money lending and the center of commerce and trade was Antwerp in Belgium. So if you wanted to borrow money, that's the place you go to get it. Then along comes, uh, comes Henry VIII the, of England, who had borrowed lots of money from Antwerp and was heavily saddled with huge overseas debt with very high interest rates. And someone was needed to manage and juggle this, which is when a man called Thomas Gresham stepped into the frame and becomes a revolutionary figure, the first man in the whole of Europe to understand what it means to be a government banker, keeping detailed notes of all financial transactions and ensuring the reliability of English money. Today, all apex banks around the world take their textbook approach to central banking from Thomas Gresham. The primary function of a central bank is to manage the nation's money supply through activities, duties such as managing interest rates, setting the reserve requirements and acting as a lender of last resorts to the banking sector during times of bank insolvency or financial crisis. The central bank has been described as the lender of last resorts, which means that it is responsible for providing its economy with funds when commercial banks cannot cover a supply shortage. In other words, the central bank prevents this country's banking system from failing. However, the primary goal of the central bank is to provide their country's currency with price stability by controlling inflation. A central bank also acts as the regulatory authority of the country's monetary policy and is the sole provider and printer of notes and coins in circulations. Time has proved that a central bank can best function in these capacities by remaining independent from government physical policy and therefore uninfluenced by the political concerns of any regime. The central bank should also be completely divest of any commercial banking interests. Well, was a brief history lesson there. With me in the Abuja studio, the director of the Corporate Communications Department at the Central Bank of Nigeria, Isaac Okarafo, the development economist, former deputy governor of Nigeria Central Bank and presidential candidate in the 2019 election, Dr. Obadiah Mailathia, and the development economist, Odilim Basil Mwebara, who is also chairman and CEO of Pan-Africa Development Corporate Company, a financial and public policy consulting firm. Thank you very much indeed for staying with us. And I'm going to come straight back to you because we did say we would. I suppose the big question in 400 years, we're talking about Thomas Gresham there, 400 years after him, we have a modern financial stability system that's become institutionalized in this country. Is Nigeria struggling to move beyond Gresham and all those years ago and and is it lagging behind other modern economies in its stability system you see this question is a very interesting one because <clears throat> i'm not supposed to bring it up here but let me bring it up because it's something that is interesting uh, i happen to be involved in Atiku's economic blueprint and uh, i took care that's Atiku abubakar, Atiku abubakar yes. the, 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 the former, former presidential yes, yes. candidate and yes. who and um, took, took on buhari in the last yes place, and as well time. as Obadiah. Like. and i took time to look at the cbn reform i did about 25 page reform all the act that needs all the uh, sections that need to be uh, struck out or to be repealed and the new things that needs to be do done because my concern is that cbn as an as an authority if i use a monetary or policy authority is actually a mini nation within a nation that's why when people say independence i say independence from who you see, in 2007, CBN Act came into being. And it horrifies me how unelected people can take charge of the 
of the blood, uh, uh, how do I put it, of the life blood of a nation. And they sit down and manipulate and manipulate policies that they most but is cases, that unique to Nigeria? Because, yeah, because really, Nigeria, that, that's another, no, that's but, another no, no, term. I'm, I'm coming to Nigeria. Well, I'm, that's another term for quantitative easing. Yes, I mean, that, that's essentially okay, what okay, takes okay. place in no, many no, no, modern what I'm economies. What I, why am I driving world? Nigeria to that? Is right. that uh, one of the things we wanted to do is that uh, there's no way a governor should do come straight from a commercial bank. Today he, he was a commercial bank and tomorrow he become a CBN governor. You should understand the consequences of that. that right. But I haven't said that. Let me tell you. What I think we need to do as a nation is to go back and reform CBN and make CBN officials to be accountable to politicians, whether you like it or not. Because politicians are those who are accountable to the people. Every four years, they go and they show Nigerians uh, their, 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 their books, how they have done well or how they have done badly. So why to some group of people who are not elected, who are not accountable to the people, just making policies as they wish, and nobody should call them to others. So I believe that what Buhari did, actually, is, is not wrong. They should have been done by, 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 by the National Assembly. CBN governor should always appear before the National Assembly twice in a year to give account of his policies. And it must be televised. So Nigerians will know what is happening. And I want CBN actually to be audited so that we know how CBN has been performing its duties and or other things do so that Nigerians will know whether the CBN is an agency that is out of reach or an agency or government that right. is Right, okay. Well, well, let me bring uh, Isaac Okorafo in before we speak to Dr. Obadiah again, uh, my last year, um, because clearly he, he needs to respond yeah. to this. I mean, does the central bank operate sort of, you know, to, to further the selfish motives and the political interests of, well, I, I, of, of, of sort of the ruling party. This is a very interesting program. Now. I can see myself sandwiched between two <laughs> politicians. I'm not um, a politician, no. I'm not a um, politician. Um, anyway, you see, I'm intrigued by the clash of views from Mr. Um, Dr. Ewebara, with due respect. He is saying that the CBN is not autonomous. Is at the same time saying that the CBN is a mini nation. Well, let me set that, that, set that aside. He's also saying that uh, the government is not elected. Right. And it is, that it is only in Nigeria. I, I want him to tell me in how many countries that the CBN governor or the central bank governor contacts an election. The process of appointment of a, CB, a central bank governor in Nigeria it's like in most other places that I know. The president makes the appointment and it is confirmed by the Senate or whatever parliament that is in place. That is number one. He also has said that every four years we go to the national. We don't do that. Our act is fantastic. It provides for a twice yearly briefing of the National Assembly on all our policies and programs. And we have kept to that. It is on record. The Act also provides for the auditing of our account. Every year, we are, if you count one or two or three public institutions, that we don't fail. By February, the last 28th of February or so, our audited accounts is usually ready. Mm -hmm. And it is a, it's sent to the president, it's sent to the minister, it's sent to the National Assembly. They have our audited, audited accounts. So we, we keep to all those. And there is something that people say about CBN that I need to correct. We are not a mini nation. We are into development financing because our act provides for that. Our Arts act provides for us to take action and make such investments in order to promote development. And why do we even go into the real sector financing? Our, one of our core mandates is monetary and price stability. Food in Nigeria makes more than 50% of the basket of price formation. That's the items that determine the level of inflation. And if you are a monetary authority and there is no food in the economy, chances are that prices of food will rise. Mm. And so 
in pursu pursuant to our developmental functions, we try to fund agriculture and manufacturing. And we have done that religiously. It's not just only in food. Right. You're, you're getting into things like no. entertainment and so on, because I mean, we're, we're no. seeing a lot of Because that. those ones are coming up because right. the level of unemployment is so high that we can't even effectively carry out our monetary and price stability functions. Right. Okay. Let me, let me and bring... so because of that, we create finance. Right. We are not going into production. We provide easy access to finance. Right. Okay. Well, let me bring uh, Dr. Obadiah, my life here, in. Um, beyond the laws that, that set it up, set up the central bank and the guidelines under which it is supposed to operate, is there today, in your assessment, a clear sense of what the central bank in Nigeria is for? Are politicians serious about giving the central bank a clear purpose and not sort of meddling in its affairs? Well, thank you. But let me also say that... Um I'm not here with my political heart. <laughs> okay. I'm here purely... That gives me comfort. <laughs> ...on my financial heart. Believe you me. Uh, and so, but, but, you know, let's get it straight. There's what they call these days the dual mandate mm. of central banks. And what is that dual mandate? Number one, price stability. Number two, growth with employment. That is the new uh, discourse about central banks throughout the world, that they have a dual mandate. Uh, and if you look at it in that context, yes, the act provides for the CBN to engage in developmental activities. But I don't think the spirit of the act is such that you will literally now be almost forgetting your primary mandate and going into things that really are the domain of the fiscal side. Mm. And in fairness to CBN, the role of CBN is not necessarily uh, to promote development. That is not the core mandate. The right. core mandate is, is price stability with growth growth and jobs. Okay, I'm going to ask you to please side, hold that thought. I'm really sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. we will continue in a minute. Yeah, You're yeah. watching the Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead yeah. as we continue our focus on the operations of Nigeria's central bank and the country's financial system. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Arise interview, where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things around the world and featuring the voices at the heart of the stories. I'm Charles Anyagolu. Now, two months ago, President Buhari made a statement supporting the Nigerian Central Bank's decision to stop providing foreign exchange for the importation of food into Nigeria. Mr. Buhari argued that it didn't make sense to spend scarce foreign exchange on food items that can be produced in Nigeria and that the country's foreign reserves should be targeted at further diversifying the economy rather than encouraging more dependence on food import bills. Now, while some analysts agreed with the president's remarks, others believed it created the perception that the president was directing and ordering the central bank to do his bidding. It triggered concern in the economic community because the Central Bank Act of 2007 makes it ineluctably clear that the bank is independent and is not supposed to be taking direct instructions from politicians. The governor of the Central Bank, Godwin Emefiele, later tried to defuse the situation, insisting that the president's statement was consistent with the bank's foreign exchange policy. What we will see from the Central Bank of Nigeria is that this president has made this comment purely to, to strengthen the position of the Central Bank of Nigeria. To say, yes, he believes in what the Central Bank of Nigeria has been doing since 2016 and that there is a need for us to reinforce that on, uh, going forward. And I, I will say that, to be honest, we would aggressively go more into the list of items that are being imported into the country and that we think can be produced in Nigeria. And we would, we would, and, and I would like to, to stress that we would ensure that more of these items get onto the list of items that are going to be restricted from accessing foreign exchange in the Nigerian banking industry, not just from central bank source. Why should we be exporting jobs to another country? 
Today we are complaining that there is a high rate of unemployment, leading to, to some extent, the level of insecurity in the country. Why should we allow people to import food, food that can be produced in the country? We need to improve the wealth in our rural communities, and, and I'm saying we will not change course. We will even be more aggressive on this, on this, on this program. Godwin Emefiele, the uh, governor of Nigeria's central bank, who are with me in the Abuja studio, the director of the corporate communications department of the central bank of Nigeria, Isaac Okarafo, the development economist, former deputy governor of Nigeria's central bank and presidential candidate in the 2019 election, Dr. Obadiah Mailafia, and the development economist, Dr. Odilim Basil Enwebara, who is also chairman and CEO of Pan-Africa Development Corporate Company, a financial and public policy consultant. Consulting firm. Thank you for staying with us, and I'll come back to you, Dr. My Lafia, um, because the 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 you heard um, Godwin Emefiele uh, uh, there um, defending um, the, what the president said, and essentially the relationship between the central bank and yes. and the, the government. Um, does that somehow reinforce for you the? view that the central bank is simply an adjunct of the government in power and a cooperating part of the current nationalist establishment and that central bank independence is a myth because the bank is firmly tied to the mast as it were well let's 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 talk about terms mm. you know the the jargon is central bank independence CBI. That is the jargon among financial economists and the rest of them. But in truth, there is no independent bank in the world. Right. There is only relative autonomy. And in fact, you can draw an axis from uh, X, X to Z. Mm. Uh, and... Um, you can put where every central bank belongs in terms of relative autonomy. Uh, some, until recently, the banks of Japan were appendages of the, Federal, of the Ministry of Finance. Uh, some in Italy were very, very quite independent. Uh, that of uh, the Bank of England, uh, somehow in between, because mm. until today, the, the Treasury Secretary, the, the, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, still provides an indic indicative framework for the structure of interest rates and uh, what they expect in terms of inflation and the rest of it. So to me, there is no such thing as a truly independent central bank. There's only relative autonomy. And given the CBN Act 2007, uh, the CBN enjoys autonomy. But let's bear in mind that it is delegated autonomy. Right. That Parliament, in its own wisdom, has deemed it fit to delegate some autonomy to the central bank for the purpose of good governance of the monetary and the financial system. Now, how that relative autonomy operates in practice is very much dependent on two people and their temperaments, mindsets, and so on. The president and the governor of the central bank. And let me just say this. In any situation whereby the, pres the governor of the central bank is 100% in a, in a chummy relationship with the president, that cannot be a good sign. Hmm. He has to be able to be tough enough to say no, sir, and look the president straight in the face. Um, but some of us are concerned that there seems to be some indication that, you know, that autonomy somehow has been watered down. Uh, you know, and Isaac is right. There's a lot of pressures from, from the society, from the political system, and so on and so forth. But there are concerns there, uh, including the incestuous relationship between central bankers who have been former CEOs of banks. Instinctively, their first loyalty is to their industry right. and not to the good governance <coughs> of the country. Right. Okay, These let, are let, issues sure. uh, that we have to, uh, uh, to, to deal with. Sure. Let, let me bring Isaac Okorafo in yes. because obviously he's entitled to respond to all of this. Um, I just want to talk 
for you to tell us more about what you understand the remit of the central bank to be and whether in that specific instance mm. that we saw there Godwin Emefiele defending in that specific instance whether the president crossed the line in his remarks uh, because the perception is that he was instructing the central bank directly well <laughs> you see why I'm laughing no way I'm laughing mm -hmm. this statement was made in 2019 mm. in 2017 the CBN has released a policy instrument mm -hmm. stating that we will no longer give foreign exchange to anybody importing anything that we will produce that we can produce in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I wonder why somebody will say the president was directing. Well, it's it's the tone. No, now now the, the, the word of, of what he said. But what is on ground? We already had. 42 items on that list. Yeah, but even if they you do food. that, and I came to you Most of them food. as somebody who appointed you yeah. and said, I am instructing the central bank to reinforce or to strengthen its fight against I, I think, this sort I of think thing. The right that would, be, he, that he would was, worry the president, me. The president was actually echoing what we were doing, what we had done for two years. What we had done for two years. And which was part of the package, the ingenious package that we put together to be, to, be to, to be able to pull the nation out of the foreign exchange crisis that we faced, which started right from 19, um, 2015. And, and so for people, I think it's actually um, mischievous for people to think the president directed us. Because that wasn't actually, uh, maybe they mis mis misread the president. Because this has existed even before then. That is one. The second thing I, I, I actually like to mention was um, what I didn't have time to respond to that. Mm. Um, the same way, but I was saying that the Naira should appreciate that and that um, we were having multiple. He doesn't seem <laughs> to remember saying that. <laughs> well, I, never I, that. I, 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 I sure. noted appreciation here. And I want to say that we do not, we actually have. Multiple windows. Well, actually, in fairness to you, he did mention. Yeah. He, he did mention the yes. whole issue free, of, um, free, of free. Naira. I said Naira to be liberalized. Free, free, free market, market. Free market. Free market. Okay. mechanism. Okay. Right. We were all alive in 2016 when the Naira hit 525.30, and um, people were saying, "Why don't you free it? If we had freed from the modeling we did, if we had freed the Naira, we would be." talking about several thousands to the dollar today. And come to think of it, when you get to a state where a, 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 a sharp depreciation has occurred due to attack, mm. what, what should the central bank do? Especially in a context where the domestic price, which you are supposed to make stable as a central bank, is very highly dependent and highly influenced by imported mm. inflation. Mm. Now, our choice at that time was, what do we do? Do we manage demand? Do we manage su supply? We started by first managing demand, building up reserves, and using that demand, that reserve, that demand management to spur inflow, which is supply. And we did a good job of that. From 23.6 billion, Hmm. reserve level. Where are we? At the time we hit 48 billion. Now the point is, and we also, it, it didn't end there. We moved inflation from over 18 percent to 11 percent. People should consider it counterfactual. What if we hadn't done this? What would have happened? And to just give some credit, or even, even if you don't want to give credit, just be silent and see how the whole thing bounces. Okay, we, we've got less than a minute before we have to take another break. So I'll let you start your um, side of the of the discussion. Would it be fair in your assessment to say that the independence of Nigeria's central bank, in spite of everything you've heard, is under political pressure? I think I, I have said it time with the abnormal, so no, I don't know why I repeat myself. But what I want to ask, I did not say that. I'm not interested in, in fiat autonomy. 
I have said that it must appear from time to time to central to National Assembly to defend this policy. Wait, that. wait, 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 allow me to. Okay. He has to tell us mm, the day in this year and and he had, the CBN governor appeared before the National Assembly. Just let him go the date. Okay. We'll find uh, out that date. Let me ask you to hold that. We'll come I back will. to you so you finish that. I will. You're watching the Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead as we continue our look at the interplay between banking, politics and economics in Nigeria. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Arise interview, where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things around the world and featuring the voices at the heart of the stories. I'm Charles Anyagulu. Now, around the world, the independence of central banks is increasingly at risk, most notably in America, Italy, the UK, Turkey, India, and elsewhere. In the US, President Trump has repeatedly tried to get Fed Chairman Jerome Powell to do his bidding and cut interest rates in order to stimulate the economy and ostensibly strengthen his chances of being re-elected. In Italy, the government proposed seizing control of Banca Italia's approximately $100 billion in gold reserves, with it, uh, which it reportedly were used to fund spending plans and has threatened the central bank's independence in other ways. Also, governments and lawmakers in Turkey, the UK, India and elsewhere have been steadily eroding the bedrock idea that a central bank should be left alone to manage the economy based on evidence and data, not political goals. So how troubling is all this apparent government interference? And are we seeing similar moves in Nigeria? Well, with me in the Abunja studio, the director of the Corporate Communications Department of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Isaac Okorafo, the development economist, former deputy governor of Nigeria Central Bank and presidential candidate in the 2019 election, Dr. Obadiah Mailafia, and the development economist, uh, Dr. Odilim Basil Mwebera, who is also chairman and CEO of Pan Africa Development Corporate Company, a financial and public policy consulting firm. Thank you, gentlemen, for staying with us. And we were talking with with you, Dr. Mwebara, before we went on break. Um, we've seen, as I mentioned there, politicians in Turkey, India, even South Africa, pressuring their central banks to lean in the direction of their policies. So if it's happening in Nigeria, it's not the exception. Look, I have told you what I want to happen, not what I want to happen in other countries, because I'm interested in Nigeria. I've told you we have to democratize the CBN because the autonomy is excessive. Because they're not elected officials. That's what I'm trying to say. But when I say the autonomy is excessive, I say that it must, from time to time, appear before the uh, by National Assembly. Because that is the Assembly of the People. Mm. To give account of what it does so that there they will scrutinize that happens in the United States. When that happens, he cannot run any kind of fiscal policy. Because then, when he runs fiscal policy, then they will ask him, on, what, on which law is he running fiscal policy? Because he's running fiscal policy. Too. And I suppose that there is a difference between saying that the government is trying to lean on the central bank. It's also the central bank's response to that attempt by the government to lean on it. No, what I'm saying in essence is that it is not supposed to be excessively autonomous. But it must, its activities must be regulated by the National Assembly. The president is what frightens me. Because, you know, the president is one single person whose political interest might not be diluted. Right. But, you know, when you bring about uh, 100 and uh, about almost uh, uh, 400 and something representatives of the people, you know, scrutinizing the policies of CBN, then CBN will actually be actually professionally run. But let me, let me leave this uh, issue very, because we are trying to actually overbeat this issue. He said that why they intervene is because they want to stabilize the value of the Naira, because imported inflation was too much. Who said? He said it. Okay. Uh, uh, Isaac O'Krafo said it. Who, who, who is a spokesman a, for a the spokesman. central bank. Yeah. But, uh, and also asked him to tell us this year alone, when the CBN governor has appeared before the National Assembly, you know, he said they appears. He has to give us the date. We're going to cross-check. But let me tell you. You see, you cannot continue to intervene in a monetary policy, in a, in a exchange rate policy, and by doing so, you are actually subsidizing imports. Because when you give Naira unfair value, that is 
higher value. It means you are making imports cheaper and the locally made goods expensive. So that's what I have been talking time with the app number. The CBN is supposed to make monetary policy based on the realities on the ground to help the economy grow. But that's but, what the CBN no, is. No, CBN because no, CBN is, is, is a is development actually, bank. No, it's, it's, it's a doing. development bank. CBN is into agriculture. Right. We have Agri Bank of Nigeria, or Nigerian Agriculture Bank. You know, I've gone around to ask these people that uh, actually that uh, actually mandated to do both. They say that CBN has actually made them irrelevant in order for the central <laughs> bank of go central bank governor. Allow me to finish, please. To accumulate a lot of political goodwill, right. a lot of political goodwill, so that the governors from around the country will be coming. Oh, we need you to support us in this way. That is very dangerous. That's very dangerous. Because then it becomes a development bank. Yes, it has to intervene from time to time because there are pressures. But when you leave your mandate, which is the, 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 the lender of the last resort, to become the lender of the first resort, then there's a danger. Okay, let me bring Isaac Okora for him to respond yes. to that. Yeah, I don't know why he keeps going back to this. The Central Bank of Nigeria does not deal with individuals directly or companies. The Central Bank of Nigeria makes easy credit available to the sectors and subsectors of the economy that we believe hold the key to economic growth. And how do we do that? We use development finance institutions, Bank of Industry, Bank of Agriculture, Development Bank of Nigeria, um, all the commercial banks, including microfinance banks. And we don't so because our act forbids us from doing that. We do not deal with But if I wanted to apply yeah. for a an, an entertainment loan, loan yes. I would get the form from the website of the central bank. You would get the form from the website of the central bank, you fill it and pass it through your bank. <laughs> it is your bank that will present the right. form to us. We can't deal with you directly. That form on the website is just to because people started faking forms. Right. forging forms and selling to people. So we tell people these forms are free of charge. It's actually the guidelines that we have. So you get the forms, fill it with your bank. Your bank actually takes the risk of that loan. All we do is to provide the money. Right. So, and they, pay, they ensure that they monitor with us your progress. Okay, let me ask you this. Yes. There is a strong <coughs> argument yes. and a perfectly legitimate argument given the law that enables the Central Bank of Nigeria yeah. and precedents that exists in central banks across the world yes. that central banks should stick to things like price stability, you know, bringing inflation down, monetary policy, and that its remit should not necessarily include macroeconomic policy. That is not a modern. That is not a modern central bank in a developing economy or an emerging market economy. All, almost all central banks in emerging markets and developing economies are into one form of development financing or the other. So you take direct and the context intervention. Is determined by the individual experience of each country. Right. And so um, when we go into all these areas, we just provide finance, provide an environment that will make, like microfinance loans. If you leave it to the traditional banks, they will not, never get there. Right. Okay. Our well, financial inclusion efforts, those are some of the things that drive us because we believe unless you're able to unleash the creative energies of these people, the economy will never grow. Okay, let, let me bring Dr. Uh, Obadiah Malafia in. You were um, a deputy governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, which is a very, very senior position to be in. When you look at the time, the period when you were there, and you look at what is happening today, mm. based on what he's saying and based on what he's saying, what is your take? Well, you know, Charles, it's easy for people to sit here and say, well, during our time, things were always better. You know, that is the human instinct. But I, I, I don't think like that. Um, I look at the situation as it is. When some of us were there, 2005, 2008, you know, the banks were almost collapsing. Yeah, but did you there have the same need? philosophy of intervening in development as much as they do No, now. we didn't. And right. because we didn't, there was no big recession. The recession came later in 2009. Sure. 
uh, uh, but there was a big recession. They faced an unprecedented recession. So one can understand the angle from which they are coming mm. in. But you know, you can overdo it. And I think we are reaching that stage where it is being overdone. A lot of the commercial banks will tell you that today they are fi facing what economists call the crowding out effect. If Central Bank has taken on this developmental banking role, then they, they just sit back and pull whatever money they have into, into treasury bills and, and uh, federal bonds, sit down, collect their 14, is it 16 percent, mm -hmm. and they go fishing. Mm -hmm. In reality, and very sadly, this is what the banks are doing now. They are no longer lending to the real sector. Okay, Le so let me, let so me, I'm really important. sorry to yeah. interrupt you okay. there, but yeah. I'm afraid we're out of time. But I want to thank you, Dr. Obadiah, my life here. I need to respond. I need uh, to respond. Well, to the problem is that we're actually out of time. So <laughs> even if you did respond, you wouldn't be on air because <laughs> they'd <they'll> just cut <laughs> you off. But Isaac okay. Okarafo and of course, um, Odilim Basil Enwebera, thank you very much indeed to all of you. And I apologize that we don't have more time. That's it for this edition of the Arise interview. Join us again for a fresh edition tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Bye-bye and thank you for watching.